uh, as a reminder, please use a raise hand function if you have a question and we'll get your question uh, eventually. So let's go ahead and have the coach make his opening statement. I mean, we didn't come ready to play. That's on coaching staff and players both. Give a ton of credit to Memphis. You know, they dropped four in a row. We tried to tell our guys we're going to get Memphis' best shot. And I think they made a statement. They're going to say turn around and do it against a top 10 team. We can just schedule away at one chance to use the top 10 team. They had it at home. They got ready to go and they, they came ready to play. And we, we didn't. I thought right out of the gate, our energy wasn't where it needed to be. I think we were locked in. Uh, you know, we had multiple guys not play their best basketball game. And I think and I'm sure this was the best Memphis played all year. So I got to give them a lot of credit. You know, we had issues uh, rebounding the ball again. It's been a major crowd, particularly our pigs. We had a major crowd turn it over. Now those the points of emphasis are transition D. They had, uh, they had way too many transition points. Transition D, defensive rebound, turnovers. So we didn't do a very good job with any of the three major points of emphasis. So we got, we got some work to do when we play Saturday, Tuesday. Got a chance to go 10 and 2. You know, if you looked at our overall non conference schedule, you know, if we can win these next two and end up going 10 and 2, I think 10 and 2 would have been a decent record with the schedule we had. But after, you know, our first nine games, it would have been like, you know, you would have liked to have gotten this one on the road. I thought we'd be playing well enough after Gonzaga and Houston to be able to come in here and get this one. We just we didn't come ready to play after that tough game Saturday night. I don't know if that had something to do with it, but I don't like to give our guys any outer excuses. We, we got to do better. We got to be ready to play. Thank you, Coach. Let's go ahead and take questions at this time. Let's start with Tony Sakalas. Tony, when you're ready. You kind of mentioned it at the end, but was your team emotionally drained or physically drained? Uh, a short layoff um, and then coming off an emotional win. Do you, do you think that, that was partially the case tonight? You know what? I don't know. I, uh, it's hard to predict why they weren't ready to go. You know, we gave them Sunday off, practice for Monday. I mean, if, if you can't play in a hard game Saturday night, get an off day, practice one. I mean, shoot, you go to the NCAA tournament, if you're trying to make any kind of run there, you got to play a game, take one day off, play another game. So if we can't play a tough game, take two days off, you know, we took a full day off. The practice for a day and played and we get we got we got some growing up to do. So Michael Casanova next. Are, are you a believer of a as a coach a team needs a game like this every once in a while to to recalibrate things? Uh, I'd rather not lose. So I don't. I mean, it's I think it's better if you can take your lessons off wins. Uh, you know, I, I we got what we deserved tonight. I know that. We didn't come ready to play. We didn't play as hard as them. They played a lot harder than us. You know, we chart, we call them our blue collar points, you know, kind of effort stuff. We chart the opponents and ours both. They were 20 points better on the effort stuff tonight. So, you know, I hopefully we'll recalibrate some guys. I, I wish we were mature enough to where we didn't need it, but if we can't get recalibrated after this one, then, then we got more issues than I thought. Joey? Hey, Coach, kind of going off of what Michael said, you know, the Western Kentucky game last year was kind of a turning point for you guys, and so could Memphis if you guys are able to turn it around. How do you go about turning things around after a loss like that? I think I get some leadership in the locker room to make sure that the team's ready to play. I think, you know, coaches can say only so much, and you know, we're supposed to address stuff. It, it means a lot more when it's coming from – players inside the locker room. So I, we got to find some leadership on this team to step up and address the team. And, you know, I didn't think we practiced particularly well yesterday. I didn't think the shoot around day was great. Like if, if somebody's seeing things head that direction, like somebody, they, they, they need to step up and say something. They can't just come from the coaches all the time. The, the best teams are usually player led player coach teams. Yeah. We got to get a little bit more of that. So I think we've got some guys that play hard enough and bring it every day that they're capable of speaking up, but they they got to 
they'll be willing to speak up, be a little more vocal. All right, we got two more questions in the queue, so we're going to finish with these two. Uh, start with Peyton Connie first. Go ahead, Clayton. Um, Coach, obviously a large uh, free throw discrepancy tonight. What did you see that kind of led to that? I didn't think it was a officiating issue. I thought it was a playing hard issue. I thought our guys were behind plays because they weren't locked in, weren't ready to play. And when you get behind plays, you're, you always end up fouling, you know, and we, I didn't think we were aggressive enough attacking the rim on our end. Should we turn it over 20 times? You know, we didn't get a chance to drive the ball to the rim enough to get fouled when you're turning it over as frequently as we were. So I think it's more of a toughness, mental toughness, not being ready to play type of deal. And that's why, you know, I mean, good teams usually make more free throws than their opponents shoot. I mean, they made 20, we shot 12. It's a bad night. It's hard, it's hard to win when you only shoot 12 free throws and let your opponents make 20. All right, Cody Scott, we'll finish up with your question. Kind of taking a positive, uh, Keon Ellis, after two two straight games of not really shooting and not really scoring, he led, led, led you all in scoring. Just what did you see from him and an improvement, just maybe confidence-wise too? Yeah, I agree. I, it was good to see Keon get going. We need that from him. You know, if we could get him and Shaq and JQ and JD all going at the same time, we'd be dangerous, you know. But I, it is good to see him get it going again, I thought. Played hard, got some deflect. You know, he's back rebounding the ball a little bit better. You know, our, our guards, if you look, Shaq, JQ, Keon, JD were eight, six, six, and five. You know, they they had twenty five of our thirty one rebounds. Those four guards, so I, you know, Keon else uh, played hard, played well. You know, he uh, he and JD Davidson were, were two leaders in blue collar points and. I think kind of had a talk with him yesterday. Let's just get back to playing hard and being aggressive on offense when it's appropriate. You know, and I, I thought I thought he was good. You know, he didn't shoot it particularly great. You know, he was three of ten from three, but he made some tough ones. He was a lot more aggressive. I think he's four of four from two. I think his at the rim finishing percentage is high. We got to get him more shots. And I, you know, it's good to see he was a lot more aggressive today. All right, thank you, coach. Talking a little trash on the field? Yeah, we get it. Trashing the state with litter? That's terrible. Keep it clean. Keep Alabama beautiful.